example 14 is we have the potentials given to us. We have V and A. Um, then we're supposed to calculate the electric and magnetic fields. And then we're supposed to figure out what the charge and current distributions are that would give us these potentials. So to calculate the fields, we just apply the equations that we just learned. So E is the time derivative of A, because V is zero, we're not gonna get a gradient. So let's start with that. So E vector equals minus the time der derivative of A. So there's only one component that depends on time. And Y Oh, this is squared. Ha! Huh. Very good. Okay, so we pull out the two. So we have mu naught alpha over 2c, because we're pulling a, two, a, c, a c down from there. Keep the inside and multiply by c, so we cancel this c out altogether, because that's the derivative of that, and it's pointing in the k hat direction. Okay, so we found the electric field. That was rather easy. Now we're given the b field, which is the curl of a. And there's only one component that we care about, that's the K. But if you want to remind yourself what the curl looks like, so we have I hat, J hat, K hat. Then we have D by DX, D by DY, D by DZ. And then we have the X component of I, of A, B, Y component, and the Z component. The only component that has any value is the Z component. So the k-hat direction's right out. And it only has a component in the x direction. Okay, there's no y or z anywhere in here. So only this derivative is going to do anything. And so we're going to end up in the j-hat direction. It's j-hat, this, minus that. Okay, so we have to minus the x derivative of this guy. So we, same with mu naught alpha all over 2. The c is going to stick around. Yeah, it is. And then the time derivative of the inside. And that's going to give us a plus 1 or a minus 1, depending on whether or not we are um, ahead or below x. Okay, so if we are ahead of x, if we're in positive x territory, it's going to be minus x, which is going to give us a plus or a minus. So plus if and minus if. Okay. Of course, when x is greater than ct, and the magnitude of x is greater than ct, the b field is going to be zero. So we have the b field. This is it right here. And that's our b. Okay. Now he goes through in the book and he just calculates all the derivatives that he can find, the curls and the divergences. Um, I think he's hoping that if you were to do such a thing, you'd, you'd uncover the charge distribution from Maxwell's equations. Um, the divergence of E would be the charge density, for instance. So let's find the divergence of E. Well, what's the divergence? You just take D by DX of the X component, D by DY of the Y component, D by DZ of the Z component. And here the Z component has an X term, but no Z term. So this is just zero. Okay. That means there's no row. There's no charge anywhere. Okay. Um, the divergence of B should be zero, which if you take a look at this as well, you have an X term in the J component, so you have a divergence of zero as well for there. If it was non-zero, then you would have discovered a magnetic monopole, so there's, there's no etas. <laughs> okay. Um, what about the, the curl of E? Well, the curl of E is going to give you, um, according to Faraday's law, it's going to give you the change in the magnetic field over time and the um, 
well, the magnetic uh, current, but we don't have that, so we don't have to worry about that. So the curl of E is just the change in magnetic field over time, which we can just do this way if we wanted to. Or we can actually do the curl of E in the k-hat direction. So the, the z component has an x derivative, so it's going to be j minus that of the same. It's going to get the same thing, actually. So we just, either way, it's going to get the same answer. So it's going to be, let's see, distribute the minus sign from the inside there, minus or plus. And then you have a mu naught a alpha. And then this thing, this term goes to zero. Where, where'd my c go? Oh, the time derivative. Um, I feel like I've done something wrong here. No, I haven't. No, everything's everything's kosher. The time derivative. So the c comes out. The two stays. And this thing goes to zero. Okay, so you have a one actually. So j hat. Okay, that's the curl of E, which is the time der derivative of B or the magnetic current. We're not doing that though. And the curl of B. Well, we have in the j hat direction, the y component of the B field. This d by dx will do something. It'll give us a negative sign. So when does that happen? Well, that's in the k hat. That's plus that. So it's going to be minus or plus the mu naught alpha over 2. And we're doing a d by dx. So the c t does the c doesn't come out because we're not doing a time derivative. And that's going to be in the k hat direction. Okay, so there's all our curls and such like that. Um, time derivatives. This is just mu naught alpha. Let me pull out a c over 2 in the k hat direction. Did I miss a negative sign here? I certainly did. This is minus, minus. Okay, and the b field time derivative pull out a C, so it's plus or minus over 2 in the j-hat direction. All right, so we have all the derivatives we can think of. Um, you'll note that this is negative the curl, the negative, I'm sorry, the curl of E is negative the change in V over time. The curl of B is supposed to be the change in E over time plus the plus the current, the volume current. And so these two don't match. So we have actually the term uh, for the volume current. And if we look at if we look at what what we get, if we kind of graph out the the, the graphs, okay, so. E, there's E. Let's kind of draw out a graph here. Let's use a different color pen. This in green. Okay, so the Z component of E. Okay, when we have, when X is zero, we get a negative value down here. Then this increases until we get to CT, and then it's flat. Okay, I should add that I was kind of sloppy here. This is equal to zero when x is greater than ct, because it's the time derivative of a, and a is equal to zero when that happens. Okay, for the b component, the b graph, so we have b in the uh, b in the y direction. This behaves a little funkily. So up here, it starts off here. Then it goes down. And it goes out there. This is CT. And then in this direction, it goes like this. So there's a discontinuity at zero. What happens as time progresses? Well, what basically what happens is this thing goes out and this thing drops down. These things go out and these things get farther apart. Okay. Now we learned uh, from the boundary conditions that when we have a discontinuous B field, um, it's because of a surface current. Okay. In this case, the surface current has to be traveling. Um, the, 
the surface current cross the normal of the plane that the surface current is traveling through will give you the discontinuity in B. And the discontinuity in B is this right here. Okay, so B jumps from a, a large a vector pointing plus Y to a vector pointing negative Y. So there's a large negative Y B there. And the amount that it jumps, we can calculate that rather easy. You just take the positive value minus the negative value. And so you get um, this minus that. Um, the C's cancel. There's two of them, so you just get uh, Sorry about this. 1 over mu of the B is the thing you get. So we're in um, we're in free space, so we the, our mu is mu naught, so it's 1 over mu naught of the change in the B vector is equal to the K, the, the surface current, cross the normal. In this case, you can see that it's jumping in the y direction, so something cross, so the surface current has to be perpendicular um, to i. So it's this plane is basically facing in the x direction. And the surface current has to be, therefore, well, this is going to be alpha t, and it's going to go in the j hat direction. That's the jump. Um, negative alpha t, actually. And so the surface current is actually equal to alpha t in the k hat direction. Okay? And that's what we so there's no charge density and the surface current is traveling in that direction. All right. That's kind of the answer. Took a while to get there, but we got there eventually. So, hopefully this was informative and helpful. Um, thanks for your time. Bye.